This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how we can copy files in Python. And to make this video as straightforward as possible, I'm going to be using these imports. So first from tkinter, we're going to import file dialog so we can easily pick files from our computer. Next, I'm going to use pathlib and import the path so that we can use paths from different OSs without any problems, whether you're on Windows or Mac, this makes it easier to not mess things up. And finally, we're going to import shell utilities. And every time you copy a file in Python, you're going to need two things, a source path and a destination. So to get started, we will get a source path, which will be of type string, and we will refer to the file dialog and ask for a file name using ask open file name. And we can give it a title. This isn't really relevant, but I like to do so because it's amusing. Pick a file, yo. And then we're going to do the same thing for the directory. Directory of type string will be a file dog dot ask directory with the same exact title. And of course that should be a location because the directory is going to be the destination path but we should still build a destination path. I didn't just call it directory for no reason. I just called it directory because we're going to use that to build a path. So the destination path, which is going to be of type path, is going to equal this path with the directory as the starting point. And then using the path syntax, we can just use a slash or division symbol or whatever you want to call it and append the file name or the endpoint of this path. So here we want to append copy.png. And this will be the destination path. So we are creating copy.png. That's the name we're giving it. If you want to give it a custom name, you're going to have to get creative with how you generate this. But for this example, we're just going to call it copy.png. And very quickly to show you what we have done so far, we're going to print all of this information. We're going to print the source path, the directory, and the destination path. So right now, if we were to run this, it's going to open up a file dialog and it's going to ask me to pick a file yo. So I'm going to pick this tree PNG and later on the destination of where I want to put this is in my desktop. Right now nothing happened obviously because we did not code anything. But as you can see the source path will be that tree.png. It's going to grab the information regarding that source. When we used the ask directory method it asked for that directory and we got that back, which is the desktop. Now with the path that we get from pathlib, we were able to construct this path. And this is important because if you are on Mac, you can see that the slashes are facing forward. While on Windows, if I remember correctly, they're going to be facing backwards. So with path, we don't really have to worry about those subtle details. It's going to take care of that automatically for us. Don't worry about this forward facing slash here. That's just the syntax used when you are building a path. And if you want something more complex, of course, you can add something else. I don't know what you would add after that, but that's how you build paths in Python, lol. Anyway, with that being done, we can try to copy our first object or our first file. And to do that, we need to refer to shuttle.copy file. And it's going to take a source, which is going to be the source path and a destination, which will be the destination path. So now let's run this and see what happens. First, it opens up my file explorer and I want to go to downloads because I want to copy my tree PNG to my desktop. So I'll type on that, open my desktop and choose that. And what you should notice is that we will get a copy of the original image with the title that I gave it. If there's a file that already has this name, it's going to replace it. And something else to note is that this returns the file location. So if we were to actually print this, what we should end up with is where the file ended up. Now we don't really need these print statements anymore. So I'm just going to rerun the script without them. Go to my downloads, grab the tree PNG and place it back into the desktop. And as you can see, it gave us the file location once we copied it. So that was the first way to copy this file. But there's one problem with this approach. And that is that this method does not copy the metadata which means if we were to go to our file and get the information, all the metadata regarding that file would be lost. And that means the last access time, the date of creation, the last modification time, all of that is going to be lost in the copy. So something we can do to preserve that information is use a different method. 
and this is called copy two. And there's nothing different to teach about it. All you need to do is change the method name and it's going to work exactly the same way. I mean, before we do that, I'm going to delete the original or not the original, but the one that we copied earlier, go to downloads, grab the tree PNG and the destination will still be in my desktop. And this time, if we were to open it, of course, we will get it in a bigger display. What I meant to do is get the information. This time, if we were to do that, we will have the original information regarding this file because the metadata will have been preserved. So that's the easiest way to copy a file in Python. Of course, it would be much better to do this all programmatically. And instead of always asking the user to pick a file, you might have thousands of files you want to copy. So if you can set up a recursive function, that might be much more efficient than manually asking people to do that. And obviously there are a few exceptions you can run into, such as if you're trying to copy a file and place it into a folder that you do not have permissions for, that's going to raise an exception. And also the destination must be a writable path. So while using this method is quite simple, it can raise a few exceptions that you just need to handle as a professional developer.